Hello and welcome back to Master Gardening. I'm your host Bud Kwok. This is the show where we learn from the masters. Today's show is for the birds. Why in the world would anybody want to attract birds? Okay, there's a bunch of downsides. Well, not really. Let's take the color, for instance. If you're a gardener, and most gardeners are going to have birds in their gardens, I don't care if you want them or not, they're going to be in your garden. If you've got shrubs and flowers, holly, whatever, uh, trees, you're going to have birds in your yard. So why not take advantage of it? The blue jays, the blue and the blue jays and the blue birds, the red and the cardinals, the yellow and the finches, take advantage of that. You get the flowers and the birds together, combination, get it? Uh, birding. What is the number one spectator sport in the whole United States? NASCAR, right? No, it's birding. Birding is bird watching. Okay, we'll get into that a little bit more a little later on how to do that. There are some step-by-step -step things to do to that. You may be an amateur, you may be a professional. We'll talk more about that later. Kids love birds. If you've got kids in the family, they love birds, they love any kind of wildlife. Why not be wildlife friendly in your neighborhood? We've taken over the habitat for birds. We put up parking lots, malls, roads, houses and projects. We've taken a lot of their, uh, their habitat away. Why not help them out? Bird, bird feeding is probably the most important thing you can do as far as habitat uh, control in your backyard. Food, if you have food for birds, they'll come. You need other things like water and shelter and all that, but maybe you're neighbor has a swimming pool. Maybe there's a creek off or a pond somewhere else. If you have the food, that's the number one. Food, water, shelter, and nesting are the four main things for a habitat. You can even go as far as being certified for a habitat uh, certification that you have a habitat in your backyard for wild animals, especially birds. If you do those things and then you have to go through the University of Kentucky, and I'll, don't do that. Just you and I know it's a habitat. That's good enough. Okay, food. Let's start out with food. What, uh, what do birds eat? Well, they eat a lot of things. Uh, there's, you get your shrubs and your trees and your flowers. If you don't do any bird feeding officially with actual bird feeders, you don't buy any bird feed, food, you're still going to be feeding the birds. You've got, you got your uh, female hollies with the red uh, berries. You've got your nandina. You've got uh, all different kinds of fruit and nut trees. You've got especially the trees that are the best trees are the evergreen trees. The pine trees, uh, they, like they said, the evergreen, they eat the needles, they eat the pine cones, they eat the sap. They're a wonderful place for nesting. And the number one reason why the birds like them the most is the insects. Trees that attract insects are the best trees for birds. Don't plant oaks, don't plant willow trees, don't plant maples. Those are not good for birds. If you do have those planted, please plant something else also. Okay. Flowers. Guess what the number one flower is? Sunflower, for gosh sakes. Guess what the number one bird food is? Sunflowers. If you're only going to feed one type of seed to your birds, do it with sunflowers. Not the big striped ones. Those are pretty good too, but the small black oil. And here they are right here. This is the number one. That's what I threw at Dan a while ago on the introduction. I don't know if you saw that or not. Maybe you didn't. Black, small black oil sunflowers. Most of your sunflowers that you grow in your, in your yard have these. Every single bird known to mankind, except for maybe a hummingbird, likes those. And it is the number one food for almost every bird. Safflower. This is the favorite food of cardinals. And this, in the, in the wintertime and the fall, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cardinals. A lot of the other birds have migrated, the summer birds have migrated. And guess why they migrate? Tammy, you know why they migrate? Food! <laughs> Most of the birds that migrate aren't the seed-eating birds, like your robins and a few others that are carnivorous, if you might say, they eat insects. In the wintertime in western Kentucky, there aren't any insects for them. There's no earthworms for them. The ground may be freezing, so they all go south. And when they migrate, it's the southern states, Mexico, and Central America is usually where they all go. OK, 
Okay, they go for the food. In the wintertime is the main time to feed the birds. If you're going to say, I'm only going to feed the birds when they really need it, it's the wintertime. And especially when the ground freezes or they have ice on the ground or maybe even snow. So if you wake up in the morning and there's snow covering everything, the birds are out of luck. They're probably not, they don't have, except for the berries on the bushes, they're going to be out of luck. So take some breadcrumbs, take some fruit, take some seeds, throw them out on the ground if you don't have bird feeders, just anywhere. Put them on your picnic table. You don't need a feeder. Help them through the winter. Let me, let me fill up a few of these, Dan. Okay, this, this bird feeder is very unique, except the, the squirrels know how to take out these screens. They'll just pull those screens right out of there sometimes. Okay, not only are you filling this up, see how the bird food feed is falling all over the floor? Tammy, you've got to clean this up later. That's kind of good because not only will the birds feed out of this, but there's a lot of, of ground feeders that this stuff that fell out of here when I filled it up, it went on the ground and encourages them also. You'll see a lot of birds underneath the bird feeders eating the feed that may be dropped out. And we talked about earlier, one of the crew members said this is what they use. It's a wild bird feed. It's got all kind of stuff in it. I mean everything, a lot of little stuff, okay? What it's got in it is a lot of cheap stuff, okay? So hopefully this bird food is a lot less expensive than the, than the, uh, the black oil sunflower. It's cheaper, but also the birds really don't care for it as much as they do the black oil. These little tiny seeds, a lot of times the birds will just take them and throw them over their shoulder. Okay, and you'll, they'll all get on the ground and you'll have all these wild plants growing underneath your bird feeders in the summertime. But that's what a lot of people use. It's called uh, nut and cherry. I don't know where they came up with that, but it's got a little bit of everything in it. Mostly cheap stuff. You don't see too many black uh, sunflower seeds in there. On the bottom, you don't see any. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is, and this is one of my favorites, uh, it's, it's, it says thistle. It's thistle for gosh sakes. It's not really thistle. It's called Niger. Niger is the name of a plant. I hope that's right. <laughs> I think that's right. Niger is the name of a plant. And this is the seed of the Niger plant. This is the favorite food of your finches. If you do any bird feeding at all, you know about finches in western Kentucky. Sometimes they fly in flocks of 10, 12, 15, or 20. And in the summertime, they're really beautiful yellow. Almost need Tammy to open that up for me. In the middle of the summer, they're almost yellow, beautiful bright yellow. In the fall and the winter, they're kind of a yellowish green and sometimes even a brown. But they love this stuff. And there's a different, bunch of different feeders that are specialized just specially in this Niger Sea. See how small that is? And oh, by the way, that's extremely expensive, okay? A lot more expensive than the sunflower. This is a brand new feeder that I just picked up and I'm, I'm sharing with it today. I, I really have never put one of these together, but for with my experience, I know that the sack is really good for the finches. They love it. And I'll show you in just a minute how it looks. This is a new contraption. Instead of having just one sack, you've got four. And, oh, by the way, it's easy to fill up. You don't have to fill up each individual sack. Uh, I think I can do this. I've never done this before. Don't try this at home. Only professionals. This is going to be a mess when we get done. We're going to need to clean all this up, I think. I hope this is the way to do it. You're learning right along with me. God, what a mess! <laughs> okay. Okay, you can... Uh, you can see that, that how that's going to do. Okay, well, I'll continue to do that and fill these sacks up. But if you look at these sacks real close, they've got the Niger seed is kind of sticking out of all the holes. The finch love that. And then I've got the, just a single sack in my yard, and there may be four, five, six finches on one sack. No telling how many could get on this one. But uh, I recommend this highly. That's kind of a neat thing, but that's, that's, you've got to really like finches. This is like 18 bucks at Factor Supply. Factor Supply? <laughs> O'Reilly Factor Supply, <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll talk about hummingbirds just for a second. I'm getting off the subject, but feeding hummingbirds. We had some questions on that. Tammy, where are the questions at? 
There's some old wives tales about uh, hummingbirds. You gotta have the liquid has to be red. No, don't put any food coloring in there. Food coloring, believe it or not, it's good for coloring food, but it's poison to birds. So don't put any food coloring in there. They don't need it red. I promise you they don't. Um, blackbirds, bluebirds. Oh, okay. Also, take your feeders down on, on hummingbirds in August because if you don't, the hummingbirds are all going to freeze to death because you're going to make them stick around longer than they want to. That's a lie. Don't do that. They're not going to stick around. They know when to leave. They know exactly when to leave. So if you've got food out, they're not going to stick around through the winter and, and die. They're going to leave when it's time for them to leave. So keep your feeders out for your hummingbirds until you don't see any more hummingbirds. It may be a little bit past that because the hummingbirds in the north, they're migrating south and they may come through here. You might get some Chicago hummingbirds coming through here later on in the year as they go south. So leave your feeders out. There's 17, yeah, there's 17 different varieties of hummingbirds that breed in the United States. That's great, isn't it? 16 of them are in the west, California. Only one this side of the Mississippi. So we've only got one hummingbird. It's called the ruby-throated. You may have already heard about that. The ruby-throated is the only hummingbird that breeds this side of the Mississippi. Now, you may see some other hummingbirds, not very many and not very often, just passing through and what have you, but the ruby-throated is the one. Okay, it's about three inches long, and if you could weigh it, which that'd be a trick to catch one and weigh it, it's, it weighs exactly the same, or pretty close to the same, as two medium paper clips. Can you imagine having two medium paper clips in the palm of your hand? That's how much one of those hummingbirds weigh. So very delicate. Another thing about hummingbirds, they say, put those, those uh, they need a, a roost so they can, they can stand while they're feeding. You don't need a roost. They don't have a roost when they're uh, eating flowers or drinking the nectar out of flowers. They have very tiny feet. They're not very strong, and they can't even walk hardly. That's how small, and, and so they really don't need a roost. A lot of people, and my neighbor said this the other day. He said, I have bees at my feeder, and, they, and the hummingbirds won't come. Well, I thought, well, that's not right, but I went over there, and yes, there's a big cluster of bees on their hummingbird feeder. You can buy hummingbird feeders that have bee cages to keep them away, or you can take the easy route and reduce the amount of sugar in your nectar. They recommend one part to four parts normally, but if you have bee problems, make it one to five, and usually your bees won't come. And you say, well, we're, I'm not really giving the sugar content to the hummingbirds like I wanted to. Well, yeah, you are, because when they feed it at a hummingbird feeder, they get as much in five minutes of nectar as they get in a whole day hunting for nectar in the flowers. So you're taking care of them really well without having all that sugar in there. Okay, we're going to take a break. I'll be back in a couple minutes. And don't forget, this is for the birds. Birding, the number one spectator sport in the United States. Right, Tammy, you remember that one? I remember. Okay, just a couple things about birding, because most of you all aren't birders. I'm an I'm a amateur birder. I've got a book, Birds of Kentucky. I keep it in my sunroom right in front of the windows where I look out and see the birds feeding. You don't have to go to a lot of trouble. Your library has all these books. They're free. Okay, these books I got at the, the Mayfield Graves County Library. McCracken County Library has shelf after shelf after shelf. But this is special, Birds of Kentucky. Every bird in here is from Kentucky. And almost every single one of them is in my yard. Dozens and dozens of different birds. I wish these were huger. I wish we could show them up. Show, can, I, can I pick out a couple maybe? Sure. Let's see here. <laughs> I won't be able to find one now. There's one right there. There's a, the Eastern Towhee. I've got those in my yard. The brown-headed cowbird, I've got that one. I don't have that one. He's back. The fox sparrow, everybody's got ferret sparrows in their yard, right? Where's that cardinal at? I'll never be able to find that cardinal. Red-headed woodpecker, right, right, right there. Red-headed woodpecker, I've got that one in my yard. There's the red-headed woodpecker, sorry, Dan. <laughs> I'm getting close. There's the yeah, I love this one, the hairy woodpecker. I don't know why they call him Harry. That's not a really good name, but okay. Library, 
Okay, let's, uh, let's feed them, fill up a few of these bird feeders. If you can only have one bird feeder in your yard, this is the one. And I've talked to professionals, they all say the same thing. It's called the, the table bird feeder. And it simulates your picnic table. So if you don't have a feeder, just spread it out on your picnic table or your patio. Better your picnic table, but keep it off the ground a little bit because some birds really don't like to be on the ground. Man, professional. <laughs> it's done. Okay, that's all you need to do. Hang that up. Almost every single bird will either be in here, even uh, your, your doves will come up here and feed in this. Oh, by the way, your squirrel will too. Let's see here. Okay. This is one of my favorites. You say you have blackbirds, and we have a question about blackbirds that I'll answer in just a minute. This is so small, the blackbirds can't get in it. So if you have problems with blackbirds, do a smaller feeder. It just takes a few minutes to fill these things up, about once a week. Unless you're like mine, they, 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 they'll empty these things in about two days. Okay, what, oh, this is, this is one special. Can you get this one over here, Dan, or do I need to move it? Is that okay? This one, bad thing about this one, is your squirrels love it, and so do your, uh, your blackbirds. But, there's plenty of room, you can get four or five birds on there at the same time. Doesn't that look old? It's about 10 years old. If you get the real good ones, don't buy the little cheap ones. Get the good ones, because they'll last forever. See, that's even brass there, Dan. I think that's brass. Look at that. <laughs> okay, we had a question about corn. One of the questions is about corn. The birds like corn? Darn right they do. Crack corn is best. Okay, some of them, are, the smaller birds especially, can't crack that hard corn. But if you get cracked corn, which this is already cracked, especially your cardinals. This is one of your favorite cardinal foods. And oh, by the way, squirrels again. And raccoons, and possums, and foxes. But other than that, okay, let's do this. Let's talk about water, for instance. You've got food, water, shelter, and then you have your nesting. That's the four requirements, right? Okay, this is water. This is buds. I carried this in my pickup truck this morning. Sucker weighs 550 pounds, but I wanted something. Okay, this is perfect. That water is only about an inch deep. Birds like shallow water instead of deep. Birds like rough surfaces instead of slick. Duh! You slip and fall on the slip surface is pretty simple. If you've got a bird feeder or bird uh, bath that's deep, all you got to do is put a rock in the middle of it, something they can stand on. That's all you need. The water, what it does, it helps them digest their food. They like to wash in it, cleans, cleans the stuff off, cleans the dandruff off of them, cleans the insects off of them, what have you, and it keeps them hydrated. You don't need this to attract birds, but hopefully your neighbors have some, or maybe there's a, some water source somewhere. Uh, but it's always nice to have the water this right close by to the bird feeders. Okay. And, oh, by the way, speaking of water, a couple more things. We had a question on this. They like moving water as opposed to still water. They like clean water as opposed to dirty water. Again, duh, who likes dirty water? So in the summertime especially, when you don't have a lot of rain, make sure you clean the leaves out of this. Make sure you put fresh water in every once in a while. And in the wintertime when it freezes, they can't use the frozen water. So dump out that frozen water, put some fresh in there. Some people can go to all the trouble to buy a heater. Not me, but some people do. Just go out there and dump that ice cube out of there and put some fresh water in for them. They'll really appreciate it. Okay, got a couple more things on the food. So what in the heck is suet? You know, you see these in there. Do humans eat suet? Yes, we do. This is beef or sometimes bacon grease. And some of these books that I got from the library are real old books. They tell you how to make this. They don't say go to the store and buy some because you couldn't do that when those books were written. This is suet. It's got all kind of goodies mixed in with it. It's really grease, lard, that kind of thing. The birds really love this, especially in the wintertime. And the woodpeckers like it the best. Matter of fact, you'll see woodpeckers on these a lot of times. And it says woodpecker treat, for gosh sake. There you go. That's for woodpeckers. But I have found that sometimes you can't believe the names on them. You know, so you just have to have experience. Anything to do with nuts, the woodpeckers like. Okay, this, this is a similar thing, but it's not suet. And I don't know how they attach it. Some kind of a gluish, uh, organic, I hope, material. But you've got all kind of different things in, in, in there. And you can have fruit in there. You can have peanuts. You can have... Uh, sunflower seeds and a lot of your bird feeders 
which I had one, believe it or not, and this is a true story, this, last night the raccoon took my number one suet feeder, or, or a feeder that takes care of this, took it with him. Okay, they took it with him. And so I don't have that with me today, but some of these bird feeders like this, bingo, see that's pretty easy. And then all the birds can peck and pick and get, get, get that out, especially the uh, woodpeckers. Okay, well it looks like we're time for another break. So I'll be right back, stay tuned, it's for the birds. Dan, ready? Okay. Welcome back. We've got a bunch of stuff to cover today. I practiced all night talking fast. Tammy hates that. But here we go. Got a couple more things to cover. This is a special tube feeder, which a lot of people use this. Uh, this is kind of a really neat one. Uh, by the way, raccoon tore the bottom off, but it still works. You can rotate these things from to these little slots to use for niger seed for the uh, finches, or you can rotate them around. And you can use it for bigger food feed, food feed, feed food, for the cardinals and what have you. I've been using it for my favorite sunflower seeds. It's empty right now. We've already made a big enough mess, so I'm not going to fill that up right now. Okay, let's talk about bird houses for a minute. I got all these bird houses here. Let's at least talk about those today. Okay, one of the main things about a bird house is where you put it. If you put it on the ground, not good. The cats will eat the birds. Okay, and we may want to talk about cats later. Uh, there's difference of opinions on whether cats eat lots of birds and whether you ought to feed birds with cats, blah, blah, blah. There's two thoughts on that, so there's, that's, that's all I'll say. Whether it has this little stick on the front where the bird can stop before it goes in is very important. Bluebirds don't like that. They like to go straight on in. Uh, how big the hole is is one of the big, biggest things. If the bird's too big to get in the hole, guess what? He's not going in. So the smaller the hole, the smaller the bird will be in there. The bigger the hole, the bigger bird will chase the small birds out. Uh, that just about goes for everything. And you'd be surprised. It's an old birdhouse, Dan, sorry. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised how many, these are really made for decoration and they're not really made for put, be putting out. But if you put them out, guess what? There's sticks and straw in there where some birds been making a home. And almost all of these, you know, this one right here, it's really for decoration. But I put it out, the birds get in there. They, they need somewhere shelter. Maybe they don't form a nest in there, but maybe just when the wind's blowing real hard or it's raining real hard or snowing or they need warmth. My boss said today that she had one that had a big hole in it and she saw three birds go into it. The wind was blowing real hard, it's kind of nippy. Three birds went into the same hole, okay? You don't see that very often because normally when a bird goes in, everybody else stays out or they fight over it. She saw three birds go in the same hole for shelter. And that's one of the four things, food, water, shelter. You need some shelter in your yard. There's nothing better than a big brush pile. You're probably not gonna do that, but if you, for instance, back beyond your back fence or something, there's a brush pile or something, don't clean it up until the spring at least. Give them that brush pile to, for the winter protection, for the shelter. Trees are shelter. What happens when it's raining? Okay, does the bird have an umbrella or goes, in, goes home? No, they have to stay out in that weather. So a lot of times they'll just sit on a limb and take it. There'll just rain on them. A lot of times they'll get up next to the tree. That's enough shelter. Sometimes they'll get under something. Sometimes they'll get under the eave of your house, wherever, whatever it takes. And you can help them with that. You can put bird houses out. You can leave that brush pile there for a while. Leave that stump there for a while. There's no hurry to get rid of it. Help them out. Plant trees and shrubs that give them shelter. The fourth thing is nesting. Okay, the bird houses again are good for nesting. Not always these really fancy ones, but if you buy the bird houses that are specifically made for bird houses and not necessarily to be put in the living room or just on the deck for, for, uh, for decoration. And if it hadn't been raining this morning, and I hadn't had so much trouble with my raccoons getting into my bird feeders this morning. I was going to bring my blue, bluebird house. Well, we could have a whole show on bluebirds. We could have a whole show on hummingbirds. But I didn't bring my bluebird house. But it's very important on how big the hole is, how deep it is from the hole to the bottom of the floor, how wide it is. Those specifications are very important to bluebirds and other birds. For instance, if you want to shelter this birdhouse, you would point 
the hole away from the prevailing wind. Why would you want to point that hole and let that wind blow in that hole? Okay, so point the hole away from the prevailing wind, which is usually in western Kentucky being the east, northeast. Okay. Shelter. Nesting. Both. Bird houses are good for both. The other part of the nesting is you a lot of birds put, put their houses or their nests in trees and shrubs. Plenty of trees and shrubs. There are certain ones that are better than others. You've got to experiment with what bird you want in your yard. When you go out in your yard and you see a, a nest in a shrub, that's a good, good nesting place. Duh. Okay. So plant more of those shrubs if that's the kind of bird you want. Hummingbird nests, very, very beautiful. Very, very rare. I wish I had one today, but I don't. Someday we'll do a whole show on hummingbirds. Uh, let's get... Let's go to the, the question and answer. We don't have a whole lot of time, but uh, I want to get these blackbirds. Tammy Whammy has problems with blackbirds. She says every time she wants to feed the birds, all the blackbirds come. In certain times of the year, that's true. In certain neighborhoods, that's true. What can you do about it? Well, blackbirds are birds too. They're beautiful. If you just take one and look at it real close, it's real purple almost, purplish black. They're beautiful. They have to live too. So just kind of... Go with the flow. If you don't like the blackbirds, you can go out there and you make one noise like that with your hands. They'll fly up to the real near bushes and shrubs and trees. But if you go back in the house, bang, they're right back on your feeders. So once they go up, the first clap, they go up to the trees, then make another noise. Shoot with a shotgun, whatever you want to do. Just clap your hands is what I do. Clap your hands and then they'll fly off. And they'll fly off to some tree way like 100 yards away. They probably take them a while to get back. Give your local birds and your pretty birds that you want to feed a chance to get in and get some, get some food. And I know the blackbirds sometimes when they really get into those flocks are a problem and, they, and they've got a problem with uh, diseases and things like that and that is true. Uh, talked about suet, talked about bird baths. Uh, okay. Certain birds are attracted to certain kind of feeders. You have birds that feed on the ground. Your pigeons and your, and your uh, doves like to feed on the ground. Almost all birds do, but they, your, your doves especially like to be on the ground. Your, this is good for your bigger birds. Almost any bird feeds in that, like I said earlier. This is like a summary, Tammy. If you want just small birds, your cardinals and your blue jays, I have seen get on these, but they don't like this. So if you want to just get your small birds, uh, this is very, I, I really don't like these as much as I do the other feeders, but everything likes this. Believe it or not, cardinals, blue jays can all get on this and your smaller birds. Your suet, don't forget that's your woodpeckers and your bigger birds mainly. Oh, I couldn't find it. There it is. Almost all your birds can get on this too. And this, it's harder for them to get it out of there, but it really simulates this simulates a sunflower. You know, your sunflower seeds aren't in a big pile. You have to pick them and get them out of there. Okay, and don't forget, we're out of time today, but this is the best feeder. If you're only going to buy one for you all that just want to start out as a bird feeder, this is the one to start out with. This one, and that's all the time we have today. I'm Bud Kwok. I'm your host for Master Gardening. Good gardening. We'll see you next time.